as we begin the scripture video. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, as the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah in his day, bring this word now to us. Touch our mouths and our hearts with your word today, that we may build on it in our lives, in the church, and in your world. Amen. These opening scenes that you see behind me today are of a famous island fortress and church in France, Mont Saint Michael. It's an image that might be familiar to you as it was to me. It came to mind for me as I was reading the psalm this week. We'll get there presently. First, we'll be considering the reading from Jeremiah. Again, with the exception of the psalm, these are my own paraphrases. You know, copyright reasons. Now, Aaron Wathen did a great short exposition of this first reading, Jeremiah. Um, she posted it to Facebook, and I highly commend it to you. You'll find it linked in the show notes below. I've not been able to find it except on Facebook, but you do not need to have a Facebook account in order to watch this short three-minute video. It's well worth the time, in my opinion. It's called, Here's Your Wednesday Word, Jeremiah 1-4. Um, later this week, she wrote, I know I'm not the only one preaching about prophetic witness this week, and wondering, who are some of our modern-day prophets, particularly young ones? Amanda Gorman comes to mind for her, and, and she asks, who else? Others mentioned by some of her viewers included Rachel Held Evans, another author I appreciate, Greta Thunberg, whom I've commended to you before, ta Coates. I have mentioned him, I believe, once, but another good one. I would add Autumn Peltier, and there are others as well. Who would you add to the list? Modern-day prophets, particularly young ones. From the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 1. Stopping me in my tracks, the Lord spoke to me. I knew you. I made you for a purpose, a purpose from before time. You were born for this. You are my prophet, to speak my word to the nations. Oh, but I fought it. I objected that I was too young. But the Lord again spoke. That doesn't matter. You will go where I send you. You will speak the words I have determined. You will not fear others, for I am with you. I am your deliverer. The Lord spoke thus. And the Lord reached out, touching my mouth, and the Lord said, My words are in your mouth. And the Lord said, Take thou authority over nations, over kingdoms, authority to make changes, authority to cast the old aside, authority to prepare the ground, authority to plant a crop and to build a future. So the Lord spoke to me, a youth named Jeremiah, with the imagery of God as rock and refuge and fortress. I can imagine Jeremiah having this week's psalm as a song to sustain him in his work. The words of Psalm 71 are set as English hymn lyrics, abiding confidence and hope. The original tune was Siloam, but I found no recording of it. I'm substituting a familiar tune with the same meter. It, the familiar tune is by Hugh Wilson. It's called Avon, and it's used as the tune for number 294 in our hymnals. Sing along if you like.
Not only does the image of the mountain fit with the psalm, I thought the image of puzzle pieces also worked with today's reading from 1 Corinthians. The author wrote, Here is how you should strive to live. Without love, it doesn't matter how well you can speak, how fluent you are in many languages. Without love, all that stuff is just so much noise. Without love, understanding the plans of God and preaching about it and having such great faith that nothing got in your way, with, without love, you amount to nothing. You could be very generous, surrendering all your wealth to help the very poor, even working hard with Habitat for Humanity, for example, so that your health even suffered for it. If you did it for bragging rights instead of in true compassion, there's no blessing in it for you. Love. Love is endlessly patient, never quitting. Love puts others first without any envy. It doesn't put itself on display. It's humble. Love is not easily provoked and doesn't keep score. Love is delighted when truth prevails, never with injustice. Love endures and looks forward hopefully. Love trusts God always. Love just lasts. Preaching, inspired speaking, putting messages in other languages, all of them become old and tired. But love is ever young. Presently, we don't see the whole picture. The best preaching is still done by and for humans with all their limitations. We will never fully capture God. But one day, one day, wholeness, completion, perfection, no more missing puzzle pieces. Children only know so much. The brightest of them is only so bright. As we mature, what was incomplete from childhood is replaced with more complete understanding. It's something like trying to look at a reflection of someone on a polished metal surface versus looking right at them. That is how things are for us right now, these distortions or imperfect mirrors. But one day, one day, wholeness, completion, perfection. No more missing puzzle pieces. We grow, we change. Trusting God will always be part of the picture. Hoping for a better day will continue to be our experience. Love, love lasts. So love, love extravagantly. One good thing about the lectionary is that it breaks longer passages into more manageable pieces so that we can focus on, highlight some portions of the passage. One drawback of the lectionary, though, is that it breaks the longer passages into smaller pieces, and we can easily lose the flow, the general direction of the larger passage. Today's epistle is an example of that. Chapter 13 follows chapter 12. Chapter 12 sets the stage for what Paul says in chapter 13. Go back and read them together. Our gospel lesson is another illustration of these points. The verses from Luke 4, designated for our reading, 21 through 30, really need the previous verses for us to feel, to grasp the larger message. So I'll review it for you, beginning at verse 14. The images here by James Tassot are from the 1800s and illustrate the beginning and the close. Both are cropped, and I'll link to you for you in the notes below, where you can view the full, larger images. Last week's reading. After Jesus had been baptized by John, he spent some time in the wilderness, a story for another time. And he then returned to Galilee, and the Holy Spirit was strong in him. Quickly he became the topic of gossip throughout all the towns of the region. Everywhere you went, you'd find him in the synagogue teaching, and he was being commended to others with high praise. In due time, he returned to the village in which he'd been raised, Nazareth, and there, too, he continued his life discipline of joining with the gathered people of God on the Lord's day, and he stood up to read the scriptures, and the scroll before him was that of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, it opened to chapter 61 which begins, The Spirit of the Lord rests on me, 
The Lord has made me his anointed to bring good news to the impoverished, to bring comfort to broken hearts, to release those held captive, to give sight to the blind, to unchain those who are prisoners. It is my task to proclaim the year of the Lord, to make plain the Lord's favor. He then closed the scroll, returned it to the attendant, and took his seat in the teacher's place. Everyone was paying very close attention, so he began to speak, and he announced, This very day, this scripture is fulfilled. Now, today's reading. They were amazed at this pronouncement of grace, and quite pleased with this hometown boy and how well he did with the synagogue worship liturgy. After all, he was the son of the builder, Joseph. As I said, they were paying very close attention, and sitting in the seat of Moses, the teacher's seat, he began to preach. We all know Proverbs, like love begins at home, and physician heal yourself. We could add more. What I mean is, you will want to see the evidence for yourself, put on display here in our town. The problem is, familiarity breeds contempt. And because you already know me, you think you understand me. The Spirit of the Lord rests on me. The Lord has made me his anointed to bring good news to the impoverished, to bring comfort to broken hearts, to release those held captive, to give sight to the blind, to unchain those who are prisoners. It's my task to proclaim the year of the Lord, to make plain the Lord's favor. Consider, during the time of Elijah, were there no widows in Israel, no one going hungry during that great four-year famine? But to whom was he sent? Who received God's help through Elijah? A widow in Sidon. You know the story. We read it in our scriptures. Or consider this one. Were there no lepers in the land of Israel during the time of Elisha? But whom do the scriptures record as having received God's healing grace at the prophet's hand? You know who it was. It was the general of the invading army of Syria who destroyed many of the towns in our area and took slaves back with him. You know the story. It is my task to proclaim the year of the Lord, to make plain the Lord's favor. But for Jesus to suggest that God's grace was given to outsiders and national enemies, this was intolerable to them. Just as he had said, they could not bear a prophetic message from one of their own. The room erupted in anger. They mobbed him. They forced him out of the synagogue and up the road to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, and they were ready to push him off the edge to his death. But passing through the middle of them, Jesus went on his way. He went down through the valley toward Capernaum, on the Sea of Galilee. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Again, will you pray with me? God of beginnings and endings, and of new hope and new beginnings, may we become truly grateful for the life you've given and all the gifts you've invested, charging us with their stewardship. May faith, hope, and love increase in us, and in our homes and churches, and in our nation and our world. Especially love, in this season of difficulty and division and conflict. May we walk in step with you in this life, honoring the call you've placed on each of us, through Jesus Christ who revealed you, and who showed us who you intend us to be who loved us, emptying himself, who gave himself for us that we might become rich, and who summons us as our Lord to walk in the way he has led. Amen. At 10 this morning, join us for our worship time on Zoom, followed by fellowship. Contact Gary or me for information on how to join. Hope to see you soon.